a very vexing issue for many African footballers who brought fame to their countries is the neglect and the failure to fulfill promises made by responsible and respectable governments in the face of football glory. A case we would say in African parlance, monkey the walk, baboon the chop. Here are two African football legends, Ghanaian golden boy Abdul Razak, 1978 African Footballer of the Year, and Nigerians Samson Siasia on unfulfilled promises beginning with Abdul Razak, who takes us to the presidency in Ghana at a reception when the Black Stars won the African Nations Cup in 1978. Oh, there we were there. They came by their cars. Those who were able, those who were able to, to go with their cars, private cars and taxis were more. They were coming there. All right, those who were close to that area, they were already there waiting. We were there. They all came. There was a band, brass band, dancing, music, everything. They were serving drinks. Everybody was happy, dancing, dancing. Before, yeah, that was called, they called attention. Everybody, everybody should stop whatever you are doing and let's listen to the speech from the head of state. And to our surprise, because when I say to our surprise, well, we had the government is going to give each one of us an estate house, players and the technical men. That's when I say surprise, because we were, when we were called to go and play, I was already in the national team before, before the 1978. It's not new for me. I'm there to play football. Everybody was there to play, not the money, some money before you play. So we were there to play. But this is our reward that they said they were going to give us. But as I'm speaking today, there was no house for us. Who, who, who was, who was, so when they who? They were the Champong uh, government, the one who came, Akufu. Akufu refused to give. Well, what he heard was, he said he's not going to give the house. He's not, he's not going to give anything himself, nothing. That was how it went. <laughs> but in, in nobody got. So Razak, you mean that the government till today did not give you the house, but they did not give uh, you any compensation, no money, nothing. It was, they didn't give us the house. They called us one time. One time we went back to Accra, and they told us that point blank that the house is not going to give to us. They said why? But you can't ask why. You see why they ask you? Don't talk. Just then listen to what he's saying. That was the, the special commissioner for sports who was with us, who told us, not the, not Akufu, no, it's the uh, Simpe Asante, Simpe As who came. No, 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 Major Esiama. Major Esiama is just like uh, the, the, the Federation president. You know, it's a military rule, so it's a, a sports commissioner, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So he came and said, no houses for us, nothing. So he said, no houses. So what are you going to do? So say, okay, whatever you want, we should say it. Whether, whether house or or oh, whether house no 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 house yes so, continue so, continue said, okay you say whatever you want so we said we want the car if you are not going to give me the house we need a car we need a car so that's why we, we propose so they said okay that's all see then we never have a meeting again <laughs> but recently the, the 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 recently the former head of state uh john mahama when they were they, they were in power the, that's the ndc party john mahama he took care of those those uh situation like how they were going to do to, to reward us so they included those in 1963, 65, the 78, and 1982. They included everybody inside. So now it's not possible to give everybody the house anymore. If because we were the only we were the only uh, group in 78 that the government promised the house. All the world knows. But 63, 65, there were no promise. They just went for the cup. Well, but the situation has come like this. So they feel they have to give everybody something. So in the end, they gave us money from the local currency, 178 uh, million. 170 like is like uh, 100 was like uh, five thousand dollars something like that. Whether well, uh, maybe it's not up to five thousand. I don't know the rate. That's what they gave uh, each one of us. Uh, Mr. Siasia, in 1994, you played the African Nations Cup. You know, um, how was it at collective and individual at collective and individual levels? Well, it was very well. I think it was very good because uh, we actually prepared well, very very well before we got there, and. Uh, we had the young and older older players, you know, the kind of mix you need to have to, to get a balance. So we had a very good squad then, very very good one. Uh, you you were going with this you were going with this star studded team. Uh, what was your vision? You were going with a star studded team. You know, look at the names, all our stars. Uh, what was your vision? What was your expectation? Well, the expectation was to and try if we can win the nations cup out of Nigeria since. Uh, the only time we ever won it was inside Nigeria. You were going to a competition to meet a team, a fellow 
brotherly team that had just come out of a tragedy. What kind of feeling did you have towards Zambia when you were going for that competition? Well, it was very unfortunate as you know that terrible thing actually happened to a team like that. They had a very good squad and they kind of dis uh, destabilized their team. But whichever way, uh, they came back. They came back very strong. You know, they they, they played very well and going to the finals. So we, they had a great team, and uh, you know, but unfortunately, what happened to them? But you know, this is football, and we just have to go out there and do the best that we can, and uh, to make sure we win in the in the finals. It was a very difficult game, but we kind of you know came out well and won the nation's cover of uh, Nigeria. But when you look back, Samson, which would you call your most exciting match at the competition? Well, you look at the one with. Uh, 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 Ivory Coast, you know, Cote d'Ivoire, they had a good squad. I think we actually ended up, up playing uh, penalty kicks or something like that, if I can remember. And uh, those are, they had a very good squad. We did a drop bar and uh, other great players are playing in the in the Premiership. That was a squad any other country should be afraid of. But, we, you know, we scaled through them and got to play in the finals with Zambia. Um, uh, and if we're talking of, uh, you scaled through Ivory Coast, but before you got to the finals, which match could you have taken as a very challenging match? Well, all games are very challenging. It depends on how you look at it. And, you know, these days you, you cannot underrate any, any team. You know, if you do, then you're going to put yourself in a lot of problems. So we came out very strong without, you know, underrating any team. Everything won't go out there and, you know, make sure we do the best that we can to win that those matches. And, uh, and that was exactly what we did. And we had a very good, you know, bench. You know, so if uh, anybody from the bench is playing and it's like the same team. So... I was caught back then was just, you know, it's, it was good and something to write home about. And that's why we're successful because without a good bench, I don't think you can be that successful, you know. Uh, uh, just because we, we've been together for a while and uh, we made some changes uh, before we got, uh, we got Tunisia to make, to kind of balance the squad with the young and the older ones together, you know, to be successful. And that's, that was what actually happened. Yeah, but as you said, you came into the competition you felt uh, humanly some 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 sympathy for Zambia to have lost their great players. This is the, this was the beginning. But when you saw them moving and moving and moving on to qualifying for the finals, did that tickle you a little bit? Yeah, it sure did. Of course, you know, getting this new squad like that uh, and that short period of time and to play in the finals. Man, they had they had other players, you know, that we've never seen before on the bench, and they had the opportunity to prove themselves, and they came out very strong too to show themselves very well. And uh, we all we all very proud of them, and to get into the finals, having lost a lot of their players in the, in the playing crowd, so they did a great job, very good one. But playing with them at the finals, people would have expected that Nigeria, with all the stars, should have maybe just crushed Zambia. Playing with them, and it was like a rubber match. Did you at any time have any misgiving? <laughs> it was a very difficult match. You know, any team that actually played to get to the finals must be a very good team. And so you shouldn't underrate them, you know, even though they had a tragic uh, beginning before the Nations Cup and they've managed to get themselves in the finals. And uh, that team should be a very good one, you know. So they were, I was surprised that, you know, they gave us a very tough game. It wasn't easy at all. We managed to win 2 1 at the end of it, where uh, Emmanuel. Nikki scored both, both goals, so it was it was very good squad. They had a very solid squad, and uh, it actually never looked like they had uh, that kind of strategy before they came to the to the finals. Kalusha was like this driving force for the team. Yes, you knew, like you, a top star, African star. You knew Kalisha was a star, but he needs to go an extra mile to be able to lead the squad of youngsters and get to that level. What was your rating? When you during that competition, when you see Kalusha pull everybody right up to the finals, Kalusha Bwala, he was I think was one of the biggest stars the PSV ever had. I think he was playing PSV then. You know, he's a record for himself just alone. Kalusha himself, the record, you know, to bear with. He's a good player and he's a good leader, and that was why he could be able to put those young guys together to to to, to have that formidable team that actually got into the finals. And he played a very big role, you know, being a leader, you know. Every chance Kalusha, Kalusha gets, every time he gets the ball, you know, it's always a, a, always very difficult for us to get out, out of him. And uh, he's always, always almost trying to score anytime he gets the ball. So we have to keep him, you know, at bay and, you know, try to defend properly against him, not to, you know, 
getting a chance to, to shoot that goal. And it's, uh, it's also good at free kicks too. So we have to find a way not to commit free kicks from, you know, the uh, outside the 18-yard box, not to give him a chance to kick those free kicks. So our, our plan actually worked against them and we could be able to win two in the finals. When Nigeria won, this was one of the great victories, like you say, win the cup outside. How did Nigeria take it? All Nigerians were very excited and uh, we were very pleased and uh, happy for what we've done as uh, players, as a, as a team and individuals. It's going to be in the record that uh, this group of players actually went out of uh, uh, Nigeria to win outside the first time ever, the Nations Cup for the country. So it was wonderful. Nigerians were very proud of us and uh, we were very proud of ourselves. The previous uh, teams of the Eagles, 1980, they won and they were given some houses at Festac Village. And uh, subsequent, another president came and made them promises, um, uh, which were fulfilled so many years after. What was the promise that was made to you? What, what, what did you? what did the state do to you, bringing that cup for the first time from outside? Well, the federal government promised to give us a, a house, houses, three bedroom flats, something like that for each and every one of us. And up to now, this promises, the promise has not been met. So we're still waiting after 24 years, 25 years, we're still waiting for the government to do what they promised. You know, this is Africa for you. You know, it's, you know, it's terrible that a government can actually promise things like that and it never came to pass. And most of these players are dead. More than six, or five or six of them are dead. So uh, it's a shame that, you know, the government has not done what it promised up to now.